listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries. As we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports... Even poking fun at the rest of the media, this is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and I do deliver it every day on Ron Siegel Radio. Or any time at 800-306-1990. Or RonSegalRadio.com. Just remember, that's the number you call any time for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team, when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference. 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. And of course, as we do every day, we celebrate life. Celebrate. There's got to be something to celebrate every day on Ron Siegel Radio, so we just have to go and find out what our celebration is of the day, National Corn Fritters Day, uh, National Get Out of the Doghouse Day. I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, it might be a bad feeling that got you into the doghouse. Personal Chef's Day. I like that one. That's always, you can never go wrong with a personal chef, so that's uh, another one that we will... Take under consideration, see where that one heads. And nothing too exciting in the celebrations of the day, is there? Uh, peach Ice Cream Day is tomorrow. World Emoji Day is tomorrow. That one's for my wife. And we'll have to just keep on watching these celebrations every day. What are the markets doing? They are fairly flat as we speak this morning. It's been not much going on in the markets. They're all watching what's going on in Helsinki, Finland right now. Dow Jones Industrial Average down 0.39, so it's nothing. Oil, well, oil, the oil numbers are falling, so that's an interesting number. We'll have to watch what happens with oil. $2.75 per barrel is what we're seeing. Oil off two seventy-five dollars per barrel. What does that mean for your gasoline prices? I, I know I paid I, would, I paid three twenty five over the weekend. Two eighty seven seven is the national average. We understand that the cheapest place in the country to buy gasoline is at two dollars fifty five point three cents. Two fifty five point three in Alabama. That's their average. Yeah, here in Taxifornia, we're paying three sixty five a dollar ten. More than they pay in Alabama. Dollar ten more than Alabama. You know, we just like to spend our money. We like to waste as much as we possibly can. That's kind of the area that we like. Three sixty is the average in Orange County, three fifty eight point four in Riverside, three sixty one point three in San Bernardino and San Diego County. You're at three sixty four four. But with the price dropping We'll see what happens there. Crude inventories declined in the largest one-week drop since the fall of 2016. When you see that drop, you should expect the gas, the oil prices will go up. But they actually went in the other direction this time. So we'll have to watch that one a little more closely for you, seeing what also what's happening in the bond market right now. Watch that one for you all the time. The U.S. 10-year Treasury, that is up. Three basis points, and not a whole lot. That's on the yield. That's on the interest rate. Talk to you in the mortgage minute about what's going on in the bond market because that's not not very pleasant right now. They're not excited what's going on in that bond market. Checking out the news of the day. We'll see what's going on there. You gotta love the chess match going on in Helsinki, Finland. So as is the norm, Vladimir Putin showed up late. It's plain. Supposedly they had problems with weather in the air, but he does that all the time. That's interesting. 
But the president, uh, not to be fooled, outsmarts Putin again. So what does the president do? He just hung out at his hotel until Putin got to the presidential palace. And then President Trump got in his motorcade, making Putin wait. Got to love that one. A little bit of gamesmanship right there. So watching our president out there on the world stage while the anti-American Democrats, and no, I don't mean every Democrat, but the anti-American Democrats, that would be Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff. But when was it that we started where we're, we criticize our president in the middle of something that's as high stakes as a summit with Russia. When did that start happening? It's fascinating how when they're overseas, we're now criticizing the President of the United States. And, and ironically enough, when he comes back, they usually find out that they're wrong anyway. Fascinating. Uh, volunteers. Now, here's an interesting story that I saw. Raleigh, North Carolina. Six volunteers asked to leave their Uber halfway to their destination because they were volunteers for the Republican campaign. Uh, where are we getting with it? with the attacks right now? Conservative group launches a project to oppose sexist attacks in women politics. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders and Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, a Democrat of New York, aren't exactly friends, but you'll find them in close quarters on a new website, Independent Women's Voice, the 501c4 nonprofit affiliate of the Conservative Independent Women's Forum recently launched Champion Women, a project described on its site as a movement committed to championing the ideas and amplifying the voices of all women. All the other groups are pretty partisan. They don't want conservative women in there. Uh, internal FBI, uh, an internal FBI employee survey shows plummeting faith in bureau leadership, an annual survey of FBI employees found a sharp decline in confidence in bureau leadership amid a series of scandals. Results published Sunday indicate although pride in working at the FBI remained about the same, faith in the honesty and integrity of senior executives plummeted, going from an average employee rating of more than four out of five in 2017 to three and a half out of five this year at the FBI's 56 field offices. Uh, moving right along. Dennis Rodman reportedly booed at a comedy roast when he made a joke about North Korean leader Kim Jong-un at a taping Saturday for the Comedy Central roast of Bruce Willis. The NBA, NBA star knocked the actor's Hollywood career. You keep making these bomb movies like Kim. But at least he's smart enough not to release his, Rodman joked. Guess the group there led by the Hollywood Reporter, didn't like that coverage. Unbelievable. Founder of Buffalo's annual Chicken Wing Festival is offering foodies another reason to indulge with the creation of National Blue Cheese Dressing Day. That sounds good to me. The inaugural celebration is Monday. Founder Drew Sir Serza known as Buffalo's Wing King, says the idea for a national holiday grew from a tweet sent out on National Ranch Dressing Day in March. The post from Frank's Red Hot Sauce paired buffalo wings and ranch dressing. In Buffalo, where the appetizer was created, blue cheese is the preferred dip for wings. In honor of Blue Cheese Dressing Day, fans at the evening's Buffalo Bisons baseball game will have a chance to bob for wings in pools of blue cheese dressing. That should be fascinating to watch that one. Rapper buys every seat in the house. A main rapper surprised moviegoers with free tickets to a sci-fi satire movie. Rory Ferrara who goes by the stage name Milo, bought all 129 seats to the 4.20 p.m. showing of the movie Sorry to Bother You at a theater in Portland, Maine on Saturday. The Portland Press-Herald reports employees were told patrons they could see a movie for free as they arrived at the theater. Ferrara says he was inspired by the movie's director, Boots Riley, to do something good for society. Ferrara of... Biddeford also attended the movie and tweeted an invite for anyone interested to click a fit, click a fic, easy for me to say, click a flick with me. I guess I just can't uh, speak this morning, Monday morning, it's a little early maybe for the, <laughs> for the news, the broadcast. Great weekend. I mean, it was crazy with uh, following the seminar out in Coachella Valley over the weekend. Hey, this week we're going to have a, a lot of fun stuff on the calendar. We've got a happy hour at Pinball Land 
Happy hour at Pinball Land. If you haven't been there, please come and join us. Everything is free. About 40 nostalgia pinball games, a big, an old time uh, jukebox. We've got a, a taco truck coming. A lot of good stuff. Come over there and join us. Go to the website, Ron Siegel Radio Events. Dot com. You can register there, ronsegalradioevents.com. Totally free. Come out and join us. Have a good time. Just a little get-together, a little gathering. Just some fun. We like to have a little bit of fun on Ron Siegel Radio before we get into our content this morning. Got a lot of great content for you. Prime, Amazon Prime Day starts later today. We're going to chat with you a little bit about that and how to get some of the best values and and get that going for yourself, for your family. First-time homebuyers continue to put down less than 6%. Got to love that one. I should have my applause meter up going on that one. Less than 6%. And people still think that they have to put a lot of money down. Well, it's not really the case. A little bum information getting out there. We're going to share the whole story with you this morning on Ron Siegel Radio. And we'll put the story itself right on our social media channel. So if you haven't had a chance to see it or if you miss any part of it, we'll have the entire article, the blog post that we put out this morning on the entire subject available for you on Ron Siegel Radio. How to consolidate your debt. We're seeing interest rates rising. How can you consolidate your debt? We will chat about that and budgeting for your first summer after graduation. All that and more, you can reach me anytime. Off-air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Did you know that banks and credit bureaus are rewarded financially if you have bad credit, and the worse your credit score is, the more money they can make off of you? How does that make you feel, knowing that banks are getting rich off of your hard-earned money? How does it make you feel, knowing that if a bank or a credit bureau makes a mistake on your credit report, they benefit from it and it hurts you? The Fair Credit Report Act of 1971 requires banks and credit bureaus to report only accurate information, and nearly 100% of all credit reports are inaccurate. If you're sick and tired of being broke and tired of being robbed by the banks, you owe it to yourself and to your family to call Rondi. Rondi is a FICO certified credit professional and has helped thousands of people just like you get out of debt and establish great credit. Rondi's number is 855-608-1990. Again, that's 855-608-1990. Or visit creditsanitizer.com. Again, that website is creditsanitizer.com. Are you a veteran? Own a home and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home Home's value. Refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 01869452. Are you a veteran, police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, or refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission, lending partners will give a credit at closing, the title company has special published rates, and many other service providers have incentives too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the 
partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends over at Gold Star Mortgage when you're ready for that next mortgage. Gold Star has the programs, the products for you. They're the only one I know about that has the fast pass loan approval, possibly saving you ten to fifty thousand dollars on the purchase of your new home. Give us a call at 800-306-1990. I'll put you in touch with the team at Gold Star to see if we can get you that fast pass loan approval. What's happening in the markets? Well, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is still basically flat, 25,019 as we speak, down just a little bit under one point. And we look, obviously, at the bond market during the Mortgage Minute. U.S. 10-year Treasury is up three basis points on the yield. Not a whole lot. Fannie Mae 30-year bond down 12 basis points. That's 12 one-hundredths of a percent. About an eighth of a percent down on the bond, which means interest rates there. The yield there is higher. Uh, So we don't like seeing those going up all the time. But that does tell us that the economy is probably in a good space right now. That's why that would be going up. When you have a bad economy, generally we don't see those types of things happening. We see them going in the southbound direction, the bond going down, yield going, the bond going down, yield goes up, or vice versa. It's just a mathematical function there. So what's causing that, the underlying issue? So all we're really seeing right now, there's not a whole lot of news this morning. Potential market makers today obviously will be the headlines out of the Helsinki Summit between President Trump and Putin. It's a relatively quiet economic news week, but we will be getting some new construction data via the National Association of Housing Builders or Home Builders Housing Market Index and Housing Starts. Perhaps the focal point will be the semi-annual testimony by Fed Chairman Jerome Powell to the Senate and House on Tuesday and Wednesday, respectively. Additionally, 20% of the S&P 500 will be reporting their earnings this week, which could impact markets. Sometimes that does have an effect. Rest of the week looks, uh, again, Tuesday, the National Association of Home Builders gives their market index. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell testimony to the Senate Banking Committee on Wednesday, mortgage applications, housing starts. Fed Chairman will be speaking to the House Financial Committee. Used to be called the Humphrey Hawkins testimony, if you remember those days. Thursday, the initial jobless claims come out. In economic news, retail sales for June were up 0.5%, which was in line with the market expectations. Control group, which strips out auto, gas, and building materials was flat which was weaker than expectations. Last month's report, however, did have higher revisions to the control group from 0.5 to 0.8%. The Empire State Manufacturing Survey measures the health of manufacturing sector, came in at 22.6, which was stronger than market expectations. We get manufacturing growing in the U.S. Those are the higher priced jobs, the higher paying jobs. So we like to see when we get those numbers coming out, that is the Mortgage Minute. Again, brought to you by our friends at Gold Star Mortgage, home of the Fast Pass Loan Approval. Amazon Prime Day 2018 is finally here. Online shopping event runs from today, noon Pacific time, all day tomorrow. That's 36 hours of great deals. Are you ready to shop? Before you add anything to your Amazon cart, there are a few things you should know. And uh, number one, timing is everything. This year, Prime Day is actually a day and a half. So when you can find the lowest prices, the answer really depends on what you're shopping for. Amazon devices like Echo and Fire TV will likely be discounted throughout the entire shopping event. For other items, bestblackfriday.com told Clark... Uh, our, one of our producers that the best deals likely won't show up over won't show up overnight from Monday to Tuesday, but all other hours of the sale are fair game. 
In fact, some of the best TV deals in recent years went live in the final hours of Prime Day. Number two, update address and payment information. Don't miss out on limited time deals because you have an expired credit card linked to your account. Update address and payment information before you start shopping. Have an Amazon Prime credit card. You're getting an extra 5% off all of your Prime Day purchases. Download the Amazon app. If you don't have the Amazon app on your phone, now is the time to get it. It's the easiest way to preview and track lightning deals, but you may want to make your purchase on a desktop more. We'll talk about that a little bit later. To get notified when a deal starts, tap Today's Deals, then the Upcoming tab, and watch this deal on a specific item. So we are checking that out for you. Buy on your desk time for easy comparison shopping. Uh, always comparison shop. I'm, I'm, you don't just take for granted because they put the deal out there that that means it is a good deal. Camel, Camel, Camel is a popular site to help you check the price history of Amazon items. Just enter the Amazon URL and click search to see if you're getting a good deal. You can even set up price alerts. Comparison shopping takes a bit of work. Requires you to have multiple tabs open, so it's best to buy on your desktop. Don't forget about Whole Foods. Amazon is offering Prime Day deals at Whole Foods markets for the first time this year. When you spend $10 in the store through July 17th, you get an Amazon, a $10 Amazon credit to spend on Prime Day. To take advantage of this offer, just scan the Prime code from your Whole Foods app or use your phone number at checkout. Finally, if you don't have an Amazon Prime membership, you can sign up for a 30-day free trial to shop Prime Day. Amazon Prime Student has a six-month free trial offer. Returning members, you don't have to pay $119 for a yearly subscription. Pay $12.99 for one month of access instead. Think about this way. If you take advantage of the Whole, Fields, Whole Foods deal alone, spend $10 to get $10. You'll offset most of the one-month cost of Prime. Just remember to cancel if you don't want to be billed again. Just stay on with us. We'll be watching a lot of those deals for you. Maybe I'll even uh, tweet some of them out throughout the day to see what might be good for you. There's a lot of great stuff going on out there. So we are just continuing to watch that for you on a regular basis. You know, I've been watching a lot of the different numbers that are coming out and you, know, you never know what you're going to find in, in the various news stories. So I'm always scanning them to see what might be beneficial for you, right? That's, that's my job as your consumer advocate is to consistently be looking and seeing where the areas, what the benefits are for you. Just get you some education, that's generally the basis of what we do here is looking to see how can we educate and what are some of the most common items that are coming up on a regular basis. And one of the things I hear about frequently from our listeners, in fact, this week at one of the caravan groups, one of the networking groups that my wife and I facilitate, filing taxes after divorce. And I th I've had this on my radar for you for quite a while. So I figured I would f finally get to it. And if you're getting a divorce, a lot of tax implications, probably not the most pressing issue in your mind. Specifics of filing taxes after divorce and how you draw up your divorce agree agreement could make a big difference when it comes to your tax refund. As you prefer, prepare for life after your divorce, things to think about so you can stay on top of your taxes. First off, determine your filing status. Filing statuses that you can use will depend on when your divorce is completed. If you complete your divorce on or before December 31st, the final day of the tax year, then you cannot file a joint return. If the new year starts before your divorce becomes official, you can still file for a joint return from the previous year. If you are eligible to file a joint return but you do not want to, you can choose the married file separately status. For those who cannot file a joint return, you may still be able to save some money by filing as head of household. Head of household status offers a larger standard deduction. Its larger tax brackets mean that you could pay a lower tax rate than if you file as a single. Filing taxes after divorce gets complicated, so remember that if you and your ex-spouse are sharing custody of a child, only one of you can file as head of household and we'll push that one a little bit on a little later. When filing taxes after divorce, you can only use the head of household status if you meet all three 
of the following requirements. On the last day of the year, you were considered unmarried, so you were single, divorced, or legally separated. You paid more than half the cost of keeping up a home for the year. That could include real estate taxes, home insurance, repairs, utilities, and food eaten in the home. You lived with a qualifying dependent, such as a child or other dependent, for more than six months of the year. Have two kids? Well, maybe you each get the part of that. So maybe you're each filing for as head of household. Talk to the professionals. Talk to the CPAs, financial planners. Update your W-4. If you and your spouse are employed, you'll each fill out a W-4. This form tells your employer how much to withhold from your paycheck. Joint filers need to split their W-4 withholding between both spouses. So if you divorce, you may need to recalculate or adjust your allowances. Alimony and child support. Alimony payments are an above-the-line deduction when filing taxes after divorce. That means you can deduct the alimony payments that you make from your gross income. As you calculate your adjusted gross income, you can deduct alimony payments even if you claim the standard deduction. On the flip side, all alimony payments that you receive qualify as income. You'll need to report them as such on your Form 1040. Note that if you receive or make alimony payments, you need to file Form 1040. You cannot use the 1040A or the 1040EZ. Child support payments make the opposite way uh, work the opposite way of alimony payments. You cannot deduct any child support payments that you make. If you receive child support, you do not have to report it as income on your tax return. Who can claim children as dependents? Well, if you have children, it's important to understand who can claim them as dependents. This will affect tax credits that you can claim as well as your filing status. The parent who can claim a child as a dependent is the custodial parent. The custodial parent is the one whom the child lives with for more nights during the tax year, a divorce agreement will often name the custodial parent. We're going to continue with this when we come back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, well, we got a lot going on right here. <coughs> Excuse me. First time home buyers continue to put down less than 6%. How to consolidate your debt. How much will one late payment hurt you? All that and more. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us. Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter. At Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Siegel Lending Team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest, of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home. You're missing out on by waiting. That's buying power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details, 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal housing lender, licensed under NMLS number 217037. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 35 and if you can believe it, 7-year interest only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. 
Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Homeowners that are 62 and older are about to find out a great way to live a better retirement. It's called a reverse mortgage, and SLT can help you learn more. Call the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990 right now to receive your free booklet with no obligation. It answers questions like how a reverse mortgage works, how much you qualify for, the ways to receive your money, and more. When you call the experts at Siegel Lending Team today, you'll learn the benefits of a government-insured reverse mortgage, how it will eliminate your monthly mortgage payments, and give you tax-free cash from the equity in your home. Here's the best part. You still own your home. Now is the best time to take control of your retirement. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 to get your free brochure. Call today or visit our website at SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or simply call 800-306-1990. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message and as your consumer advocate. I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990. In the real-time real estate segment today, being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text NEST, N E S T, to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does. First time home buyers continue to put less than 6% down. That is the latest news according to the Realtors Confidence Index from the National Association of Realtors. 61% of first time home buyers purchased their homes with down payments below 6% in 2017. Many potential home buyers believe that a 20% down payment is necessary to buy a home and have disqualified themselves without even trying. But in March, 71% of first-time buyers and 54% of all buyers put less than 20% down. Ralph McLaughlin, chief economist and founder of Veritas Urbis Economics, recently shed light on why buyer demand has remained strong. And I quote, the fact that we now have four consecutive quarters where owner, where owner households increased while renter households fell is a strong sign households are making the switch from renting to buying. Households under 35, which represent the largest potential pool of new homeowners in the U.S., have shown some of the largest gains. While they only make up a third of all home buyers, the steady uptick in their home ownership rate over the past year suggests their enormous purchasing power may finally be coming to the housing market, unquote. No surprise that with rents rising more and more, first-time buyers are taking advantage of low down payment mortgage options to secure their monthly housing costs and finally attain their dream homes. The bottom line, if you're one of the many first-time buyers unsure whether or not they would qualify for a low down payment mortgage, let's just get together and chat about it and see, and we'll set you on your path to home ownership. That is the real-time real estate segment. Again, brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Hey, just text NEST, N-E-S-T, to 79564. They do the best job of anybody I know of in getting information out there to you quickly about properties that meet the guidelines that you've set up on what you want to own, what your property will look like, and when they come to market, you just get a text message. No advertising, no phone calls, no long uh, uh, garbage that you have to deal with. Just pretty simple stuff. So that is the real-time real estate segment. And before the break, we're chatting about filing taxes after divorce. And we got to the point of discussing this. We got a lot, a lot covered in that last segment. I'll just give you some of the headlines of it. Number one, you've got to be determining your filing status 
Uh, we've got on there also, you're going to update your W-4, alimony and child support we talked about. Who can claim ch- claim children as dependents is where we left off. So you, if, if you are the custodial parent, you are eligible to claim the child as a dependent. That means you have the potential to claim the Earned Income Tax Credit, EITC, as well as the Child and Dependent Care Credit. When filing taxes after divorce, you may also be eligible to file taxes using the head of household status that we spoke about in the last segment. As mentioned earlier, this will affect your income tax brackets when filing taxes after the divorce. If you are not the custodial parent, you are the non-custodial parent for tax purposes, you cannot claim the earned income tax credit or the child and dependent care credit. You also cannot file your taxes as a head of household. However, you may be able to claim some credits. The non-custodial parent can claim a child as a dependent if the custodial parent signs form 8332 Release, revocation of release of claim to exemption for child of custodial parent. In that case, the non-custodial parent is eligible to claim the child tax credit and the additional child tax credits. In order to use Form 8332, the custodial parent will need to sign it and the non-custodial parent will need to attach it to his or her tax return. Complete one form for each child. Note that if you are the custodial parent and you sign this form, you can no longer claim the child as your dependent. If you have not yet filed your 2017 taxes, you can also claim an exemption of $4,050 for each dependent or child. However, the Trump tax plan eliminated these exemptions in favor of a higher standard deduction in 2018. Deducting legal fees when filing taxes after divorce. In general, you cannot deduct legal expenses from filing a divorce. For example, you can't deduct fees for counseling, litigation, or tax advice that you get during your divorce. There is one notable exemption. If you are seeking taxable income, I, I, seeking to receive property or alimony payments, you can deduct some legal expenses from trying to get that income. So if you're suing to get the income, you might be able to, to file those claims. Let's say you want alimony payments or you want larger alimony payments, but your spouse disputes your rate right to that alimony. You can deduct the legal fees you incurred during this dispute. There are some restrictions, though. To deduct these expenses, the alimony you receive in one year must exceed 2% of your adjusted gross income. You also need to make sure your deductible legal expenses have their own bill because you cannot deduct any expenses from legal counseling. Your attorney will need to provide you with separate bills for the non-deductible and deductible legal expenses. Here the bottom line is, make sure that you chat about it. Make sure that you get the proper counsel on this information. Just know that it's a question for you to ask. Take away if you're gonna through a divorce, Important to make sure you understand how it will impact. <clears throat> it's important to make sure you understand how it will impact your taxes. For starters, review your filing status. Not be able to file a joint return if your divorce was complete on or before December 31st. If your divorce wasn't complete until the start of the new year, it is still possible to file a joint return. Review your W-4 to ensure you claim the proper number of allowances. Alimony will factor into your AGI, but child support will not. If you incur legal fees from trying to get alimony, you may be able to deduct those fees. However, you cannot deduct other legal fees. If you have any specific tax questions about your divorce, best to work with a tax professional. We talk to you about that all the time. Very, very important. What we're trying to deliver to you here on Ron Siegel Radio is quite simply, we want you to know the questions to ask. We want you to know that there are issues for you to consider. Once you consider those issues, then talk, or, or, or once you know that there is an issue to consider, talk to the professionals, either the CPAs, the accountants. Just some thoughts for you. Get that information. Again, you are listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, how to consolidate your debt, how much will one late payment hurt your credit scores? All that and more, you can reach me anytime, our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter, at Ron Siegel, and if you miss any part of our broadcast, 
Shame on you. But the replay is available. Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Most businesses struggle to get the online reviews they need to get a competitive edge over their competition. Rex is a brand new technology that uses text messages to direct happy clients to your online review sites, Zillow, Google, Facebook, and Yelp, and unhappy clients to a private survey so businesses can win more customers. Try Rex today by going to www.meetrex.com. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed-rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Seagull Lending team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call the Ron Siegel Team at 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you a no-obligation real estate plan. You be the judge if this is right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to reap at ronsiegelradio.com or call today, Ron Siegel, 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject change and without notice. Licensed by the California DOC and BRENMLS 217037 and 145502 and CalBRE 01869452 and one eight six six. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Siegel Lending Team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest, of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home. You're missing out on by waiting. That's buying power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details, 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message and is your consumer advocate. I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio anytime at 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. The Your Credit Matters segment today being brought to you by creditsanitizer.com. You have a credit report. It is wrong. What are you doing about it? Credit Sanitizer has the solutions for you. You just need to go to the site, creditsanitizer.com. 
Register on the site and get the information that will help you accomplish what you're looking for. Issue today, how to consolidate your credit or how to consolidate your debt. More importantly, how to consolidate your debt. Trying to figure out how to consolidate your debt. One of our listeners just continues to, or we constantly get this. I mean, I, don't, I can use any one of them. I've got Ricky here, Norma here. Too much credit card debt, high interest, applied for a loan to consolidate into one payment. Didn't get it because of something on the credit report. Payments are always on time by using auto payments. Sears raised the interest to 16.24%. Chase raised theirs to 29.2999 interest. And there's no talking them down either. Plan not to use either of the cards again now and or after they are paid off. How can they charge such high interest rates on credit cards when the savings account is paying one and a quarter percent? So once you decided to consolidate your debt, there are several steps you can take. First off, get your credit report. That is a big issue. Always be monitoring your credit report from the three major credit bureaus. So you can go to my myannualcreditreport.com. There's a number of the different issues, but make sure you're getting FICO scores, not the credit card credit karma is good for a little bit of information but they're giving you vantage scores they are not fico scores make a list of the balances you owe on each of the cards or loans you want to consolidate along with the interest rates and the monthly payments doing this will help you identify the debts that are most important for you to consolidate just remember that 29.99. Do you realize that that's going to double every two and a quarter years? 29.99 means that debt doubles every two and a quarter years. Got to be able to see these things. How do you know where you're going if you don't know where you are? How do you know where you want to get? So when you list your assets, include all of your savings accounts, business accounts, home equity. You may have, and then you need to make a list of all your liabilities or debts. When doing so, make sure to include all your debt like credit cards, student loans, mortgage, car loans. You can then take a closer look at the interest rates you have for each of them and how much is still owed on each account. This gives you a clearer picture where you might currently stand financially. Now, there are a lot of options. One of the things that you really want to look at at that point is you need to know what your blended household debt is. Blended household debt. That's when you put in the weighted average of everything, the weighted average of all of your different debts. And basically what you're doing is you're saying, okay, I've got a home loan and it's got a certain percentage rate and I owe a certain amount, my payment is a certain amount. And then I've got a car payment and maybe I've got a home equity line of credit payment. And then put all of your credit cards with the interest rates on each one of them. Then when you put that in there, you're going to come up with a blended household interest rate. And it's fascinating. I get this call all the time. Well, Ron, I don't want to refinance my loan. I've got a 3.5% first mortgage, and I don't want to change that. And I said, yeah, that doesn't really matter. Because when we look at your blended rate, when we look at your interest rate versus the term and the balance and weight all that, your household rate might be 5, 6, 7, 10%. Well, what's the difference if one item is low? What you want to do is maximize everything. So look at the blended rate for the entire package and then say, okay, where, what can I do? How do I, what's my game plan? And again, that's what we do at Ron Siegel Radio as a consumer advocate. We look at that for a lot of different people because sometimes the right answer is just simply going down to one of the big banks on the corner and getting a home equity line of credit. Might be your answer. Might not be your answer. It might be that you need to refinance your home loan, pull out some of that equity that's growing at three, four, five, six percent, seven percent, and replace that with and get rid of your debt that's growing at twenty or thirty percent. Right? Why would you want to continue earning or paying or having home equity sitting there doing nothing for you and continue paying? 30% on some of your other debts if they're significant enough. Now, one of the things you have to look at there is based on the reduction of the interest rate, what is the break-even period, right? So if you're going to go from a 7% blended household rate to say maybe a 5% because generally you're not going to get the prime pricing if you've got a lot of debts. 
A lot of debts means that you're generally going to have a higher debt-to-income ratio. You may or may not have a great credit score. So let's be realistic when we look at these numbers. I don't want to talk to you about a 4.5% Freddie Mac rate when maybe that's not possible for you in your situation today. And the reason I emphasize the idea that today is because those things can change. It's all about the game plan. It's not about where you are today. Today is just one day, one snapshot. It ends in 24 hours. The whole idea here is, is let's put a game plan together to get to you, get you to your end goal. Had a, a very fascinating meeting on Friday with a gentleman. He's looking at the potential of selling his business. But he never thought about the fact is, what does he need to live in retirement? How much money does he need on an annual basis? If you don't know then, how do you know when the right time is to sell your business? Because his business is growing like crazy. Your scenario is the same if we're talking about debt consolidation. What assets do you have? Now, when you tell your, the, when we heard in this particular scenario from Norma that she's looking at, she's not going to use those credit cards again. First off, I got to ask why? Because we never want to close credit cards unless we have a real, real good reason. A 30% interest rate is not necessarily a good reason to close the credit card. If it's got a high balance and a high limit and it's old, well, we want to bring the balance down. We want to keep the limit high, keep it open, and maybe just buy a tank of gas every month to keep it open and then make the payment right away. Right, So there are various scenarios on how to consolidate the debt. You might be able to call your local bank or credit union and get a, or an online lender and get a personal loan, a transfer balance from a high-rate credit to a low-rate credit card. If you consolidate loans online, do not close that account. And more importantly, don't run up the balance on the account that you did the transfer from because that's just getting you back in the same level of hot water. Make sure you're using a reputable lender. Make sure you read all the details. I heard from somebody just recently that here's the ID, idea that it was a, an 8% per month loan, 8% a month. Yeah, uh, yes, Linda, it was that they had changed the rate on that Chase card to 29.99 on this particular listener who wrote in this. 29.99 was a Chase card that they raised that one to. And I think there was another one. I'll look back in the notes on it. They had raised another one to uh, the uh, Sears card to 16.24. So they're getting the astronomical interest rates. Think about that. But again, now, if you can call up and say, talk to some, push the envelope with, these, with the credit card company. You know something? I'm working on getting a debt consolidation loan, and I'm going to transfer everything off of this Chase card unless you bring it down to a more reasonable rate. And you know something? I, and, and you have to play the game. You know, I may be just closing this. They want to keep those cards opened. They're not, they're not in the business. They like the idea of of keeping those open at a high interest rate. They make a lot of money. They know that if you get a consolidation loan, here's the fact of the matter. I'm going to call it, tell you straight out because we've done this for a lot of years. Do you remember in 2007, 2008, they talked about predatory lending? And they talked about a loan called a 327 loan. It was a very, very high interest rate on the first three years. And then it adjusted after, for the next 27 years. The whole focus of that loan was to give people a second start, a fresh start, without them filing bankruptcy. And they would get a higher interest rate loan on their residence. And it may be at 7, 8, 9, 10% interest, but it was significantly less than the 15, 20, or 30% interest they were paying. The whole idea there was to pay off the other debts, keep the credit cards open, use them sporadically, and build up credit. When you do those things, then we said to the people, call us back in two years, or we'll call you, and if you do what we tell you to do, you'll be in line for a prime rate loan. Well, the problem is, is we don't listen as a consumer base. We go out there, we get the credit cards paid off, and we go back and do all the same dumb things that we did in the first place to build up those balances. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Right? You should know better than that. You know better than that. So we're telling you all the time, don't do that. 
you make the, that payment, bring down the balance a little bit, continue making the same larger payments, bring down the balance, and continue and, and do what we tell you, two years from now you're going to get a much better interest rate loan. So those are just some of the areas you can negotiate. Consolidate your debt. Pay off the loans as fast as possible. You may need to be talking to a bankruptcy attorney. I don't know your situation, but you know something? Sometimes just a conversation with a bankruptcy attorney can make you feel a lot better and give you some guidance on what you might be able to do to negotiate with those creditors. You negotiate with them and say, you know something? I want to I work with you, but... My attorney tells me, you know, something that maybe I should, I'd be better off filing bankruptcy and not worrying about this at all. And watch how much quicker some of these companies will start the negotiation process if they think they may get absolutely nothing. And we ask you every day, it's one simple thing in return for the advice we like to give you every day on Ron Siegel Radio. Set that first radio preset button to come back here and join us on Ron Siegel Radio where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to John who's engineering us today. And of course a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or meet any of our guests, call me anytime. 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio. Let's go.